There's no bigger protector of the Second Amendment than Wayne LaPierre. Thanks so much. Hey, it's great to be with all of you this afternoon, and I, I appreciate that, that welcome. I know you're here because you care about our country, and I know you care about our future. And next month, America is going to elect our next president. You know, when you think about it, it's an anxious time in our history. But ours has been a nation of many periods of great anxiety, going all the way back to the very beginning and founding of our country. One of the greatest documents in freedom's history begins simply with the words, when in the course of human events. Our Declaration of Independence held certain truths to be self-evident and to be obvious, that we are all created equal, blessed by God with very certain rights. And, that, and to secure those rights, government is established by the people and for the people. In declaring freedom from the king, our founding fathers laid out a long list of abuses to their life, their liberty, and their pursuit of happiness. The tyrannical government refused to enforce laws necessary for the public good. Government refused adequate representation of the people. Government made efforts to make public records difficult to examine. Government obstructed the administration of justice. Government invaded the privacy of people, imposed onerous taxes upon them, and ignored laws that were in place to protect them. Some of those abuses sound very familiar today to you. Yeah. You know, with clear minds and pure hearts, the Founding Fathers of the United States set America on a course to become the freest and greatest nation on Earth. In doing so, they pledged to each other their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. The anxiety that Americans feel today about the direction of our nation, it pales greatly in comparison to what those brave colonists must have felt in 1776. Yet today, anywhere you go in our country, and like you, I'm out there every week somewhere in the country, wherever you go, Americans are anxious. Not about breaking the tyranny of the shackles to live free. They're worried about saving their freedoms. They're worried about a nation that they feel is in many ways being lost not at the hands of a despot king, but to a soulless class of elites bent on their own success, leaving the American people in their destructive wake. It's kind of if it's gotten to the point where the, the American dream exists only for the chosen few, for the special class, while the rest of us are stuck working for it, paying for it, suffering for it, and in too often with no chance of ever achieving it. All over this country, when I'm out there on the road, people come up to me and they say, Wayne, I've never been more worried about my country than right now. And they say it not with anger in their eyes, but they say it with a sadness in their eyes. And they're sad because they feel their core values, their freedom, they feel it in their heart that it's slipping away, eroding, and that they worry that it may be too late to save it. We face a culture of leadership in our country right now, and this is really sad, but it's gotten to a point where that cultural leadership routinely lies on all kinds of fronts. And all of you know it's true. We face an economic recovery touted by government elites and their media enablers that's left millions and millions of Americans behind. Our government, boy, it prints money like it's going out of style. 
And you know what? Maybe it is. While the wealthy take advantage of the glut of money to borrow for nothing and invest for more. It's not just that the rich get richer, it's that the wealthiest of, of the elites are making the rules. And as a result, acquiring wealth, far too many people in this country can't even imagine. All while so many Americans can't even get a decent job, much less a cost of living increase. You know, it used to be that our parents and their parents worked hard to put food on the table, provide health care for the family, and get their kids a great education. They worked hard for us so that we'd have it better than they did, so that we could live the American dream. Now, at the hands of the elites, and you know this, Far too many public schools are a complete disaster. School buildings in many areas of this country are literally falling apart. School rooms in too many areas have become daycare rather than education. And test scores have been lagging so far behind the curve that the curve has been lowered just to pass and move students on. Meanwhile, and here it is again, the children of the elites Pick Washington, D.C., pick L.A., pick the area, the wealthy, the powerful, the connected. They've just not secured private kindergartens and grade schools and prep schools. Their parents have the strings to pull for Ivy League educations. The children of those parents, they're set for life. While the children of most Americans wonder what American life is supposed to be like for them. Jobs health care, financial freedom. One of the mainstays of American life are now beyond the reach of too many people in this country. Our right together, speak out. Our religious freedom, our right to privacy, our right to care for our families as we see fit. It's all on the decline. Meanwhile, those same elites what have they given us? Health care, that's a regulatory nightmare. All you got to do is pick up your paper, and you see it every day. A southern border, and I'll tell you, I've been down there time and time again with the law enforcement people. It is ruled by drug cartels and human traffickers. We have tax policies that chip away at our families, and foreign policies that are littered with failures from Russia to the Crimea to Asia to a burning and on fire Middle East. And they've done all of this to us while diminishing our military forces, even while terrorists bomb offices, attack delis, concert halls, and commit mass word murder in the world's streets and shopping malls. They slice throats, they behead the innocent, and meanwhile, the elites are dishonest about the threat we face. They know that there are hidden terrorist cells in this country right now. Political leaders that we used to be able to count on and should be able to count on to protect us and our freedom, they're failing. And the really appalling thing is they're failing while they get rich in the process. Worse, the governing elites politicized and weaponized government agencies to use at their own will, to their own end, against us, the people. Think about it. Again, just read your newspaper. The FBI. Did you ever think that would happen in your lifetime? The IRS. Obama's Department of Justice. HUD. The list could go on and on. They're all being used at the discretion now of the political elites against law-abiding Americans. They become political arms of the White House. They're not, all of these are not separate and they're not disconnected failures. They're the inevitable failings that were spawned over time by an increasingly disconnected elitism that has now taken over 
and rules our country to their benefit. America is no longer a government of the people, by the people. It has, over time, become more and more a government of the elites, by the elites. Our morning in America has become America's winner of discontent as the political and the media and the financial elites have blinded us with a blizzard of lies to seize control. All these examples, I don't think I'm telling you anything. I think you already know it. If you like your doctor, you can keep it. The economy's in great shape. We have to pass the bill to see what's in the bill. Benghazi was about a video. Free college, free health care, free daycare. The borders are secure and safe. The stock market, it's stable as a rock. They've even made a lie of the very basic tenet that if you work hard, live right, your kids are going to have a better opportunity. These are the dishonesties of the elites that keep the average citizen appeased, under control, and in submission to the ruling class. The elite governing class is unaffected by these lies. They're, not, they're unaffected by the policies they impose. They're not worrying about health care, Obamacare, having to live under it. They've got their own system all set up and rigged. The elite's wealth continues to grow. Their social status is preserved. Their personal safety, it's secured. All while the rest of us, all while the rest of us become more impoverished, more dependent upon one more government program. As the majority of Americans are left to deal with these consequences. It's the consequences of a disconnected ruling class in this country. And as a result of that, we all become less personally secure, not only in our finances, but in everything else. We become less personally safe. And bit by bit, the sad part is we become less personally free. Let me give you a very real, specific example of what I'm talking about. And let me go right to Chicago, the president's hometown. Chicago is the president's biggest lie. The city is run by his former chief of staff. They have just about every gun law you can imagine. It's already on the books in Chicago. While some forms of crime have decreased in this country, the murder rate is trending up. And nowhere is it trending up more than the city of Chicago. So far this year, and this is a national tragedy, it is a national shame on this country, 568 citizens have been murdered there. 568 citizens. Compared to a year ago, the homicide rate in Chicago has skyrocketed by over 40 percent. And Chicago's deadly year is far, far from over. What are the elites? who rule Chicago say we ought to do to stop the violence? And what do their media enablers hop on the bandwagon and tell people? Pass another gun law on top of all the others they already have in their gun control utopia up there. Yet here's the deal. What have the elites actually done in that city to protect Chicagoans' lives? The honest truth is they've done absolutely nothing. That's dishonest government, it's a lie, and it's getting people killed in Chicago every day. Now let me tell you the truth. President Obama could save lives in his hometown right now if he wanted to. According to the Chicago Police Department, 90% of all homicide offenders in that town have re prior repeat arrest records. 90 percent. They know who the bad guys are in Chicago. The president. Right now, President Obama could pick up the phone, order his U.S. attorneys to flip that town upside down, and prosecute every felon with a gun, 
prosecute every criminal gang member with a gun, and prosecute every drug dealer with a gun. Every one of them, they could all be prosecuted today under the existing federal gun laws. Just think what would happen in Chicago if they did that. When they talk about illegal guns in Chicago, what the media doesn't tell anybody is they're illegal because they're taking them off of a prohibited person. That means under the existing federal gun laws, the penalty is five to 20 years in federal prison. Under the existing federal gun laws, if they took them off the street, they'd never get to their next crime scene and hurt anybody. But President Obama and his Department of Justice refused to do any of that because it doesn't fit their agenda of the ruling class in this country that they don't want to put anyone else in prison, so they're sure not going to prosecute any of these gang members and drug dealers that are doing the killing up there. Yet how many times have you ever heard ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, the New York Times, or any of them tell you the truth about that? They enable it to go on day after day after day because they're all in the can with the president and his agenda, and none of them will report the truth. Just think about it this way. It's the elites again. Just think about it this way. What if there were 500 murders in Beverly Hills? or Manhattan, or the wealthy suburbs of Washington, D.C. I'll tell you this, you'd see a wave of U.S. attorneys, government agencies, all over those districts, because that's where the elites live. But they stand by Chicago while good, innocent people are slain on the south side of Chicago, and they do nothing about it. Those dead are the victims of the elite's selective enforcement of the law. The saddest part of all is if the president wanted to save those lives, he could. But he hasn't, and he won't. Those deaths are President Obama's legacy. On Wall Street, in gleaming offices across the country, corporate executives think less about the future of America's economy and more about short-term profits. Global shareholder expectations have replaced long-term American prosperity. The Hollywood elites, they fill our screens with violence, filth, decay. It's like a sewer going into America's culture. Global business executives redistribute American wealth to their own design and political rulers carve out financial status and cultural elitism for themselves. Media celebrities, and you got a bunch of them right down the road here, grovel and fawn over their own personal fame and fortune, all while protecting themselves and protecting their children with private schools, nannies, armed security, and gated communities. It all comes down to the detachment of the ruling class from those they govern has never, ever been greater in America, at least since July 1776. The dishonesty that the average American citizen faces and has to deal with has never been greater in our lifetime. But when someone tries to speak out, someone tries to tell the truth, God forbid you try to do it, you're shouted down, demonized, discarded. They yell bigot, racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic. These are the weapons skillfully and immediately deployed by the detached elites to stamp down anyone who dares speak out and challenge them. So the blizzard of lies rages on as America races closer to the breaking point. Because truth will, eventually and certainly, truth will prevail. It always does. As As I travel this country, I see Americans from one end of the country to the other saddened by the direction the ruling elites have taken this country. But I'll tell you something else I see. 
I see Americans becoming more and more determined to step forward and save it. Fear. Because they fear they're losing the values and freedoms we were born with. And out of that, a new birth is being given to a dedicated movement that's seeking societal salvation in this country. In record numbers, millions and millions of Americans have found in the Second Amendment a metaphor for all of the freedoms that they cherish. And in the NRA, this organization that I'm so proud to be a part of, and I know many of you are members, and that's what makes it all work one by one. It's everyone individually. You know, the media always forgets that. It's not the building in Washington. It's not me. It's not anybody else. It's all of us one by one in our hearts that are determined to save these freedoms. And through that, together in the NRA, we have found an unwavering voice for freedom. What I love about the NRA is it's an organization that stands on principle. It is unafraid to speak the truth. And it's unflinching in the fight for all that is good and right about America. And you know what? And this probably drives the New York Times, the Washington Post, ABC, NBC, and CNN, and the rest of them nuts. In poll after poll after poll, NRA is consistently viewed more favorably than either national political party, both chambers of Congress and the White House. It's true. While, while NRA favorables have over the decades that I've seen it go from the 40s to the mid-60s in percentages, groups lagging far behind and the recent Gallup poll in, in every key state in this country politically had the NRA in the upper 50s. Groups lagging behind NRA's favorability included anyone in politics, the news media, the banking industry, Hollywood, and even Major League Baseball, viewed less favorably by the American public than your NRA. You know, most presidents long for NRA's favorability ratings. And most groups look at us with envy. 30 million people specifically identify with the NRA. A great majority of the American public supports what the NRA stands for. And it's become painfully obvious to people all over this country that if we're going to save this country, someone else is not going to save us. That's the biggest lie of all. In fact, it's the lie that gave birth to all the others. Only we can save ourselves in this country. Only we, together, can join together and save our nation. And it's time we all step forward and do it. <laughs> Americans, like their forefathers, know in their hearts that freedom, that precious freedom that we have, is a gift from God, not from government. We are the first country in history that was founded not on a race, not on a religion, not on a royalty, but on a set of God-given principles that we Americans call inalienable rights. That's what makes us free. That's what makes this country so special. And that's what Americans know in their heart makes us the freest people on Earth. Americans have awakened from decades of lies by the elites. Who would rule us have determined that America, we've determined in our hearts that it's time that we set this country back on its rightful course of individual freedom, where that's respected, the most basic of all, your individual personal freedom, where justice is restored, where laws are equally enforced. Wouldn't it be great to see that in the country now? I won't even say the name of who, whose mind everybody's thinking of when I say that. And government elitists, I'll tell you, it's time they get off of our backs and they get out of our lives.
There's something very special about our country, the United States of America, that's worth saving. It's why we're the envy of the world. Ours is an opportunity that can only come with individual, true, honest freedom. That's what the NRA, that's what the National Rifle Association of America stands for. It's the American liberty for which we all yearn and fight and vote. And it's why we have to pass it on to the next generation. Our cause, it's not revolution, but restoration. A national movement of passionate Americans determined to once more set themselves free from the tyranny of lies that we're experiencing in this country this day, to these days. Free to live the American dream to its fullest measure. A dream that can only be achieved through the purest, most honest blessing of liberty. It's a dream of every generation, a promise that's handed down by our founding fathers, a blessing that is ours to hand down to our children. It's for that freedom the NRA always has and always will stand and fight. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless our great nation, and keep fighting for freedom every single day. Thank you very much.